And we talked off air briefly about re-identifying yourself and maybe re-channeling that passion and that application you had as a player into another career. How did that look like for you? How was that transition and that approach? So I've always been a curious person. So um, what I wanted to do is to learn as much as I could and get as much uh, education as possible to be able to put my thoughts and ideas into a, into a process or into a project. And I think that that was uh, easy to do. But then once I was in the project, it was focusing and canalizing my, my energies into what was the work, what was the actual work. And that as a player is very easy. You know where to put your energy, you know where to put your focus. Uh, as a sporting director, the focus is more spread out throughout the day. There's different moments where you need to be present, others that you need to take a little bit of a step back. And, and this is where the, the managing uh, comes into place. I think as a player, you manage less your, your, your own business, your, your own, you, you create your own career, you make your own career uh, with the help, obviously, of others, but you, you're your own uh, person um, that, that guides this. As a sporting director, you're managing other people. And, and when you're managing other people, you need to see uh, what they see from their perspective and to put yourself into other people's shoes to, to make sure you understand where, where they're coming from and why they say things they say. Uh, I think that's um, a, another type of uh, managing that is important. You're on this endless, I guess, process of learning and looking towards successful sporting executives in this early journey that you are on. What do you think separates them from the rest with the players or, or executives that you've interacted with? I think the ability to continue, continuously uh, better themselves. Uh, so being up to date to, with the technology, being up to date with what's happening in the game, with the market, with uh, different trends, you need to be able to com continuously uh, better yourself. Uh, it happens in a lot of other fields. Um, medicine, doctors continuously learn about new technologies and new ways of, uh, of, of doing things. In law, it's the same. In football, it's the same. There's new trends, there's new things. You can't just be stuck with what you've known and uh, what the game looks like for you in your head. You need to always be curious and, and learn about uh, what's happening. And I think the, the best sporting directors or the best executives know what the trends are and, uh, and, and are ahead of, uh, of the rest. How does that pressure compare to when, to when you played? Because I think large parts of being successful is dealing with that pressure, dealing with discomfort, arguably, and you've done that week in, week out, being judged, being selected, and then playing in front of tens of thousands in pursuit of trophies and, and results. How do you compare that and how, I guess, could you leverage that into the new, into the new role? So this is a difficult one. Obviously, as an executive or sporting director, it's not really in your hand what's happening at the weekend. It's in your hand the strategy that you set uh, the club to be on and what identity you want to follow and what the values are that will bring you to, to those things. But the rest is not really in your hand. So, um, at first, it was a lot of frustration because you think, okay, I, I, could, do, I could do it differently. But uh, when you appoint the right people and you give them this trust and you give them this power, you should be, be able to be confident about uh, your decisions and, um, and be there as a support system and making sure we continuously improve the different areas of the club. You've worked under Arsene Wenger and his praises cannot be sung enough. But I came across a quote in which he said that it was in those moments of them playing that free-flowing football, those five minutes of perfection, that's what gave him joy. That was what was almost a win for him. I guess that invites a bigger question is, what is success for you? What constitutes a win? And whether that's different the way you see it when you are a player versus a sports director. It's a rather like philosophical question of that is, what is a win for you? But how do you, how do you see that? So, of course, it's different. You have to see the bigger picture. When you're a player, your wins are the, the important things. Huh? And everyone, 
can be some people can be more of a romantic of the game and i think that's a little bit what seske was talking about of the the nice way of playing with always the idea of winning i i i, I won't forget that and the, the important part was also to to win the game but to have this uh, this area of uh, wanting to do the things the right way and and play the nice football as a sporting director you have you take a little bit of distance to the weekend's result and i think it's important to do we are a result-driven um, industry, for sure, but as a sporting director, you need to take a little bit of a distance and not uh, focus on the weekend's result only. Uh, it, it's part of a bigger process of getting the club uh, into a better place and to grow as a club and to go into the right uh, direction. I think that's an important, uh, an important factor. You set goals up at the beginning of the season. Um, you set a structure that will help you go towards those goals. And I think uh, the, the hard part is to maintain into that line. You're clearly a thinker of the game. You thought what standards I needed to be at, what I need to be to be at the level of the, my teammates. And you've played with some, some of the greatest players, but those are the very top. Do you think they think as much? I think they probably think about it, but they have a way of managing it that allows them to not think about it as much, probably, mm -hmm. and and to be freer in in, in their performance. Um, that's their way of managing. Uh, I think everyone has different ways of, of managing stress or or expectation or anything you can call it. Uh, but uh, the top levels, for sure, have uh, are, are perfectionist because you have to be to be at the top of your game. But they have a different way of managing that. Peter Crouch said something in a podcast and he said the difference between himself and Gerard and Lampard was that they didn't enjoy themselves. Do you agree with that sentiment? I think they enjoyed part of, of that game. But, uh, for example, Thierry was very hard on himself as well and, uh, and was expecting the same level on other people, uh, which is, is very difficult to attain. What does success look like for you? It looks different to me. Maybe my success was to take out most of what God or my family or whoever you want has given to me and do something with it. This is my form of success. I'm not built the same way as you are. I'm, I don't have the same uh, brain as you do. Mm -hmm. I've not lived in the same environment as you have. And I think this is the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. You know, my success is different to yours. Some people value your success. Okay, you've had a fantastic career. Yeah. Maybe I think I should have done more, or maybe I think yeah, I've done more than what was expected of me, and that's my success. You know, I wanted to be perfect, and it's hard to enjoy any part of the the game when you want to be perfect, because you're never gonna be perfect. No one's gonna be perfect, and the day you start enjoying the little things, this is when I started to enjoy a little bit more. But at the beginning, I used to be very hard on myself because of that, because. Uh, I was looking for perfection and you, you soon realize you can't be perfect.